this is T-Bone that killed Brachus Joaquini. I just wanted to show you what he did. So I just put these, randomly put these ferns in here. And he kind of webbed on top of them and made a tunnel system under it. Which I think is friggin' awesome. And there's T-Bone right there. If I can get him. There's his butt. Good job, T-Bone. What's the going on here? Luna's getting a new home. Luna? Luna! Luna's so tiny. I know. So tiny. Boop. But if you won't, you get a new house. That's right. Right on to the cork book, babe. Oh god, my it's pretty Luna. Pretty Luna. Yay! And who is this? This is Goyle, my GBB. I don't see anybody. He's right down there. Ah, okay. How are you going to get him out of there? Oh, it's moving. Yeah. I'm wondering if I can do the up and over with him. He's so shifty. Oh, there he goes. He get sort of yeah, yeah. No, yay! What a good spood. Goyle. Oh, don't move. I'm gonna zoom in on. Him. Apparently, if you zoom in too much, it gets blurry. Look at that abdomen. I know. And he's still eating. What is wrong with him? It's a GBB. This is crab. Do you know the scientific name? Crapatopelma siupubescence. Something like that. I don't know. I think it's dead. Oh, there he goes. Oop, there it is. Will you walk up and over? Maybe. Jerky. What a good spoon. Yay! I'm zooming in on its ass. Well, I don't know where to go from here. We got peanut butter, filled pretzel container, or we got my cat's ass, or I have blood just pouring out of me and I have no idea why. But anyway, I'm going to show you step by step on how to make a arboreal type tarantula enclosure with one of these things, or you can get cheese balls or pretzels or whatever. They're usually about four or five bucks for the yumminess, and then you get an enclosure. So we'll come right back and I'll figure out what the heck I did here and yeah okay you want to start by getting the thing off every once in a while you'll get lucky and you'll get one that's made of like a plastic or a really really tough paper and it will all come off in one fell swoop today is not that day apparently it's tearing but that's okay though I can show you what to do with the sticky stuff so I'll come back and show you just how much I got off alright so when you take your stickers off you're gonna have this 
glue stuff. This one had two labels. The first one took like 10 minutes to get off because I wanted to get all the paper. there. But there is a label on the other side. And that one all came off in one fell swoop. And this is what's left of the other label. Don't worry about the little crumbs inside. We'll take care of that too. But right now I'm going to teach you how to deal with this sticky crap. Because I think that's why people don't like making these enclosures. But I got you covered, fam. We'll be right back after these messages. Today's episode would be sponsored by Canada Dry Bold Ginger Ale. Oh my god, it is so good. If you can find it, you get it, you put it in your mouth. Okay, once you're ready to take off your sticky stuff, you go to your store and get yourself some goo gone. Goo and adhesive remover. And this is a 12 ounce bottle. Do you remember how much this was? Three, four bucks. Three, four bucks. So that's going to be like five, six bucks Canadian. The boot. Anyway, you just spray it and, well, you can let it soak in for a couple minutes. So I will do that and we'll be back. Hi. Okay, so you let it soak in for a couple minutes. And you just start wiping, and you'll be able to feel it even under the uh, the towel. So it's definitely coming off. You can use your fingernail or whatever to get the bigger chunks, but that's how you do it. And then once you think you're done, unless it, you've already cleaned the inside, you can kind of just feel with your hand so that's nice and smooth so I'm going to do the other side but it's the same thing so you don't really need to see that so here's me doing the other side if you can find a container of yummy things that has this one big plastic label then you're already ahead now we're going to move to the sink and I'll show you what to do next I can't turn it off because I got glue gone all over my friggin' hands. Okay, here's where it starts to get a little tricksy. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and dump the pretzel remains. <coughs> Excuse me, wow! So, what you want is super hot water. I mean, super hot. Okay. This is Dawn Platinum. This stuff's awesome. So you don't need a whole lot. Then you're going to fill that all the way to the top. I don't know what's going on with my faucet. It's making all kinds of weird noises lately. So, when I mean all the way to the top, I really mean all the way to the top. So it starts overflowing. That's when you can shut your water off and put your lid back on. Okay, now since we used Goo Gone and that stuff gets quite slimy, I'm going to fill up the sink with hot water and a little bit of Gone. So we'll come back. This is taking too damn long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paper towels Ow! and just start wiping. You want all your goo gone. Gone. Oh, here's another thing about plastic and prettiness. When you wash dishes in your sink or whatever, or, have your, or do anything in your sink that's not an enclosure, rinse it very, very, very well because for some odd reason, enclosures are attracted to grease. And I don't know why. And then they end up looking like crap and it's almost impossible to get off. 
So once you have this good and wiped down, and you just start rinsing. So hang there, yeah. I like cold water. It's gonna burn the crap out of myself enough today. But we ain't done rinsing yet. Okay, now you want to take your top off, dump about three quarters of water off. Put your lid back on, give it a good shake. That'll loosen up anything that didn't, any, any microbes that didn't make it. And then, we can dump that out. Now here's where the real fun begins. I gotta wait for the sink to drain. That's not helping at all. You're gonna switch to hot water. And if you have a sprayer, that's awesome. Or if you have a uh, remote nozzle in your shower, that's even better if you get more pressure. But you just keep doing this or run it under the sink for like 45 minutes because you want any trace of any chemical gone. I don't know if Goo Gone is uh, organic safe or, or whatever, but better safe than sorry. So we'll be back. Okay. Then you want to get some paper towels. Actually, I'm going to start with the outside. Get it all dry. Make it look pretty. Do either one, doesn't matter. But the reason you want it dry as possible is that's when you can start looking for maybe some imperfections or maybe you missed a spot or whatever. And depending on what kind of water you have, I live in Alabama, so our water absolutely sucks. I don't think they have any treatment for it. I think it comes straight from the creek. So mine's always going to look partially cloudy. And there's nothing I can do about that. But if you have good water or a filtration system, you're good to go. Now I will show you the next step. Oops. Alrighty. After you get it as clean as you possibly can, the next step is making your holes. You can either get a drill, which will take longer, but you can get more better consistently sized holes. It also kind of depends on what you're going to be housing in here. Or you can use a soldering iron, which is what I use because I'm lazy. I usually do two or three rolls, rows, depending on the size of the enclosure. So I'll try to keep these about an inch apart, going back and forth in about two, two and a half inches, going this way. So I will show you this whole thing, but. I'm probably going to speed it up. Okay, so mine are pretty consistent. Some people will actually mark it off and use measurements and stuff. I don't because it's just a cheap ass enclosure. So who really cares? But if you get like an acrylic something, you know, whatever that might be a little more expensive that's when I would uh, actually mark it off and be precise. Some people put holes in the lids. I just put this one in here because I was testing to see if the soldering iron was hot because I used to use my tongue and boy let me tell you how much that sucked. Alright, we'll be back here in a second with the next step. Okay, next step is adding your dirt. I'm not going to go through the whole full giant thing because this is a temporary thing and I'm just going to dump the dirt 
back in the tub because, like I said, it's temporary. But anyway, the way I do dirt is I'll get a... That's not going to fit. This will, though. I'll get a good couple inches or whatever, and I'll mush it down. And then... I'll use my spraying device, which is almost out of water. And give it a really, really, really good spray. I'm not worried about the size. I'm more concerned about getting the underside moist. And this will also depend on the species of tarantula or whatever you're putting in there. How much humidity do they need? And then I'll add another two to three inches on top of that. And then I'll pack that down. Put in your cork bar, cork tube, your plants, water dish, whatever, your label. And then you put in your. Uh, arboreal critter and that's how you that's at least how I make the arboreal setup so uh, hang on I'll show you a completed one so this is a much bigger one there's one we just did here's this one Jeannie lives in here the avicularia metallica let's zoom in on her But there, but plants, homemade cork tube that she keeps webbing over, and plants she keeps webbing over, and and that's that. Serious? Would you like a dust head roach? No. Nobody wants these. Smaller. There you go. Well, I'm glad somebody likes them. Yay. Get it, Snips? Yay. That's kind of passive. Good job. <laughs>